This, the 16th chapter, uh, verses 15 through 22. The Bible says it this way, how can you say I love you? She told him, when your heart is not with me. This is the third time you have mocked me and not told me what makes your strength so great. Because she nagged him day after day and pleaded with him until she wore him out. He told her the whole truth and said to her, my hair has never been cut because I am a Nazarite to God from birth. If I am shaved, my strength will leave me and I will become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah realized that he had told her the whole truth, she sent this message to the Philistine leaders. Come one more time. For he has told me the whole truth. The Philistine leaders came and brought to her the silver with them. Then she let him fall asleep on her lap and called a man to shave off the seven braids in his head. In this way she made him helpless and his strength left him. Then she cried, Samson, the Philistines are here. When he awoke from his sleep, he said, I will escape as I did before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. The Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes. They brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles. And he was forced to grind grain in prison. But his hair began to grow back after it had been shaved. For a title, I just want to teach today, how did I end up here? Heavenly Father, I need you. I pray, God, that you preach, Father God, through me. Touch my mind, my mouth, and my meditation so these, your precious lambs, can feed their Father from the bread of heaven. Hide me behind your cross, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. amen. Please take your seats in the presence of our Lord. Um, as a seven-year-old boy, finding myself sitting in my room on punishment after discipline from a five-foot-nothing woman, asking myself, why did I have to have such a smart mouth? Why didn't I just take the garbage out when she told me to take the garbage out? The last question, how did I end up here? It's a bright sunny day. Jesse and Johnny in the field right beside me playing baseball, mocking me because I can't come out and play. How did I end up in such a situation as this? Many people hear about the champion Samson, but moreover, you hear about the purpose that God born into this man. It's interesting that it seems like the children who come by way of women who were barren have such a calling on their lives that you have to be careful with all that anointing. That the Bible says that he was born, he was created to destroy the Philistines. God blessed him with a gift of super enormous strength. Samson was confronted by a lion and he killed that lion with his bare hands. He was able to kill a thousand men with the jawbone from an ass. The Lord gifted Samson with great strength to bring Israel out of bondage, to bring glory to God for his service. But unfortunately, we don't use what God gave us in the appropriate manner. That Samson used the anointing that God gave him to bring more notoriety to himself. Samson was a Nazarite, consecrated or devoted one, separate, an individual who made a vow to keep himself separate. Here's this word to God not from people to God. 
The vow consisted of three important rules of how we'll flow through this sermon, Jesse. He says, if you're going to stay close to me, here are the three things. If you keep this Nazarite vow, I need you to stay away from anything produced from the vine. I need you not to touch anything that has been dead or cutting one's hair. Those three things will keep you close to me and will moreover will help you keep your promises. Now, you may not keep a Nazarite vow today, but what I want you to understand is, is that you can put a hindrance on your relationship with God if you don't keep your promises. Don't ask God to get you out of a jam and say, God, if you will, I'll do that. They call that in a workplace quid pro quo. That God's not a genie. God wants you to be obedient. And when you are obedient, God will open up doors and use you in the manner in which he birthed you for. I think somebody's wondering where we're going today. That the text wants us to understand that you can be born with all types of purpose. But there are two things that really make a man go left. Usually, when you have a calling on your life, there are two things that will make a man lose his ever-loving mind. Most of the time, it's girls that'll make a man do something strange for a little bit of change. Recognize that it's money and women that make people lose their calling and their anointing, and they trade in the Messiah for 30 pieces of silver. In this text, the Bible says that, Samson, your whole job is to bring ruin to the Philistines. But watch this family. The very thing that God told him to destroy was the thing that he was most attracted to. He says, I want you to destroy the Philistines. And when you come close to them, I want you to just smash, 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 Hulk. I want you to kill, kill, kill. But the Bible says that Samson saw a girl and she was finer than the girls in his neighborhood. His mama and daddy says, you can't find nobody good looking around these parts. He says, I don't care what you talking about, mama and daddy. She fine. Ah, this is not in my text, but I'll give it to you for free. Cheering, be careful dismissing what your mama see in your girl. Be very careful not recognizing that your father was a young boy with low bridges at one time in his life. That he can recognize some things that you haven't even seen just yet. Just because they say no, they ain't hating on a player. They trying to love on their lineage. His parents says, don't go after her. He says, I got to have her. He says, the text says, you ain't supposed to have nobody from that trial. He says, I ain't care about the text. See, I, I, I'm trying to teach today, but I want you to understand something. Uh, it's very dangerous to be anointed. You see, some people believe that their anointing is only prevalent when they're obedient. When God gifts and anoints you with something to glorify him, you can still use your gift when God is far from you. God just ain't getting no glory. The thing is, is that God will let you, as the old folks used to say, he'll let you tear your butt. Okay, y'all looking at me strange. Um, you can preach the gospel being disobedient to God. And have a word that will have folks falling out. You can play here. Come, brother. You can play the music just like heaven sounds and not have a walk with Jesus. You can pray on your knees. You can hum like them deacons of old and go home and treat your wife poorly. You can be a mother in the church that pray for everybody but never pray for yourself. You can have all the gifts and the anointing and still not be walking with God. What happens is it makes you arrogant to be gifted. 
So Samson was so strong that he was able to shake his way loose whenever he got in trouble. And he felt like God, like a genie, would come to his rescue whenever he got in a jam. So what happens is you stop relying on God and you start relying on the gift. And when you rely more on the gift, you can say, I don't need counsel from my people no more. I'm anointed. Don't you teach me how to preach, pastor. I'm gifted. You jealous. Y'all can stay with me in here. That I can't take counsel because God has endowed me with the word. Many people can be born throwing a baseball 100 miles an hour, but you need a coach to help you get it over the plate. God is trying to help us understand you need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need the Holy Spirit to convict. You need the Holy Spirit to correct. You need the Holy Spirit to tell you don't go that way. She has no good intentions for you. The perfume may smell good, but she's going to make your life stinky. Samson got to a space where he couldn't hear what nobody had to say. So he was in a position to where he killed a lion and he went back to that lion and he ate some honey out that carcass. Wasn't in the Nazarite vow. He wasn't supposed to touch nothing that was dead. Amen. Let me help us somebody a little bit in here today that Samson didn't just eat it for himself. He gave his parents some of the same honey from out of dead carcass. Watch it. Most of the time when people find themselves in sin, they want you to sin with them. Because when I'm being disobedient, it ain't fun unless the, the homies can't hide none. So if I'm going to be your disobedient son, I'm going to bring my mama and daddy in. But he was just low down. He didn't even tell his mama and daddy where the honey came from. So mama and daddy in the room, if you know your grandson ain't got no job, don't you take no money from him. I'm a... Uh, I'm here to pay your house off, mama. You ain't worked in five years. He says you can have the wrong type of relationships and the wrong type of relationships will make you ruin the relationships you've already got established. Chasing somebody new will make you forget about the people who had your back for a very long time. I'll say it again. I said his mama and his daddy said, don't go that way. He touched something that he wasn't supposed to touch that his mama taught him, and he brought her something from a dead place. I don't want to bring no dead stuff to people that I love. I want my conversation to be full of grace. I want it to be life-giving. I want whatever gift I give somebody, they can grow and not die. I won't want nobody guessing where my blessings came from. If you receive something from me, I want you to have confidence that his character is intact. And if he gave it to you, I know it's legal. I don't want nobody scratching their head wondering if they can cash my checks. Can I cash this today or Monday? Monday, praise God. <laughs> so the Bible says that, I'm writing a text, I just wanted to catch you up with the character of Samson. He says that, that Delilah was having a conversation with Samson after he had already uh, entertained her inquisitions. That she asked him over and over and over, how and where does your strength come from? How is it that you are able to kill those people? How are you able to tie up foxes by the tail and burn down an entire village? Where does your strength come from? And see that when you're strong and you feel like can't nobody touch you, uh, you also have this thing called... Um, sarcasm and when sarcasm comes out your face it kind of gives an, a hue uh, that you smarter than most uh, so he entertained her inquisitions and helped her understand it uh, first off uh, tie my hair up See, this wasn't odd because he wore his hair in plaits anyway. So he says, she says that when he tied his, she tied his hair up, she called some brethren from out the closet to jump on him. Um, I don't know if y'all read the Bible, but the Bible is very entertaining. I said, she asked, how and where can I tie you up? Where does your strength come from? 
He said, tie my hair up. And then she put him to sleep and she called some brothers to jump on him out the closet. Uh, Y'all slow today. Uh, Don't hang out with nobody that got too many men in the closet. I don't want nobody with a backup man. Nobody that can call another man when I ain't doing right. Nobody that can call another man to jump on me. Nobody that can call another man to say he's sleep now, tiptoe in. I'm preaching in here. Y'all ain't hearing what God is saying. Be very careful of somebody that got too many cousins. Everybody your cousin on this street? So he was teasing her and he was fooling with her. So when the Philistines came out, he jumped on them. Ha, gotcha. So she says, if you love me, y'all hear that word? If you love me, master manipulation metaphor. If you love me, you will tell me what can kill you. If you love me, you will tell me of how I can seduce and trap you. Look at the text. How can you say I love you, she said to him, when your heart is not with me? This is the third time you have mocked me and not told me what makes your strength so great. Because she nagged him day after day and pleaded with him until she wore him out. Amen. Pastor Compton, the only man here having fun. He up here by himself. He's like, mm-hmm. She told, he told her the whole truth and said to her, my hair has never been cut because I am a Nazarite to God from birth. If I am shaved, my strength will leave me and I will become weak like any other man. Our first point, the wrong companion can lead us into temptation. Um, Um, I'm almost done. The wrong companion can lead you into temptation. Uh, What the Bible wants us to understand is, is Samson was breaking all the rules to hang out with somebody who didn't have his best interest in mind. Uh, Let's look at the context of the scripture. The Bible says that she was Delilah. And when you look up the name Delilah, that is a Jewish name. Um, But if you look even deeper, she was somebody who had converted and was no longer following Judaism, but she hung out with the Philistines. But she wasn't just somebody who hung out with the Philistines. The Bible describes her as a prostitute, even possibly a temple prostitute. I know somebody says that's got to be an oxymoron. How can you be in the temple and still have prostitutes? prostitution on your mind y'all just go ahead and let that go but the bible says that even though she was a defector that 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 samson had an affinity of her he says you have already turned your back on your people but i'm still in love with everything you have for me delilah stood as an example of the children of israel and how they defect every now and then towards god that they knew the language they were called the name of God but they followed the practices of the pagans and so that Jesus I mean that God gave us Samson to destroy everything the Philistines represented but he found himself attracted to her and he was drawn to her and couldn't shake her loose I think somebody made a song about that in the 70s that every time I think about her my heart hurts every time I want to go to sleep I daydream about her I don't know if you've ever been in love with somebody that don't love you back it'll make your stomach hurt it'll make you not want to eat it'll make you want to go to the bedroom get up under the covers turn off all the lights turn the TV off but put some old sad music on to play all day is there anybody in here who had somebody that you wanted to want you but they ain't want you back you see Samson was in love with Delilah but Delilah was in love with money 
The Bible says that in today's terms, she was in a position where she could have got $15 million worth of silver for betraying the one who was enthroned in love with her. So be careful of the people who want your secrets because their secrets may not be to enhance you. The secrets they want may be to empty you. Some people want to know why your marriage is so strong so they can start plotting on tearing it down. Come on and help me, God. Some people want to know why your children are so disciplined so they can find something to pick your house apart about. Everybody that want to know your secrets don't have your best interest in heart. Be careful of the companions that you keep. Uh, why you always come around my house? You got the nicest house. Your kids, they so mannerable. And your husband is so tight. What you say about my husband, you hussy? You better go somewhere and find your own husband. If you want to hang out with me, call me on Saturday. I'll meet you somewhere. Y'all can laugh if y'all want to. Everybody that ride in your car don't care about getting to the next destination. Sometimes they riding in your car to hear your conversations. Sometimes they want to know how you moving. What he like on his lunch break? What time he take his lunch? Get up out my business, huzzy. He was in love with somebody who was in love with money. She was being used, and she didn't recognize that she was being used to bring herself even lower and bring Samson low. Know this, that the adversary knows what you have an affinity for. And what the adversary will do is he'll dangle that thing in your face until you compromise. Come on, God. He says that he'll keep on dangling things in your face and in your spirit that you thought you were strong enough to shake your way loose whenever it came upon you. Yeah, God preaching today. Some of us have been entertaining sin for far too long we thought we can just get on our knees in the morning and say sorry God but God says the devil is trying to set you up that's why that carrot been dangling in your face you started on one website now you got a subscription you ain't just getting a subscription now you setting up DM conversations preaching here Holy Ghost don't entertain sin because sin will soon try to entertain you it ain't no problem. I could just shake my way loose. You know, it was a wedding. Sociable drinking. It ain't sociable till you ain't sociable no more. Girl, you an old crying drunk. You started off with one glass of champagne. You was all over the flow. When that Luke song came on, girl, I ain't know who you was. Samson knew that Delilah didn't mean him no good. I said he knew that Delilah didn't mean him no good. But when you have an arrogant spirit because of your gift, you think can't nobody get you because you are the winner in every room you walk in. He says, my strength won't let nobody apprehend me. I'm quicker than the average cat. She not gonna do nothing to me. I'll be able to get my way loose like I always could. But that's what I love about God. That God will let you get all the way down the street thinking that you done got away with something and bring it right back to your face and says, listen, I tried to warn you when you was born. Watch the text. When your mama told you to stay away from unclean dead things, when your mama told you to stay away from the vine, when your mama told you to do this and not cut your hair, you ran to exactly what your mama told you not to do. Now, why are you afraid? Because you made your bed. Go ahead and lay down. How, how, how did I get here? Uh, I got here thinking I didn't need God no more. I was more excited about his gift than his presence. 
I was more excited about the things that he put in me than depending on him every day to lead and to guide me and show me who should be in my circle. Can I poll the room? Do you still ask God about new friends in your life? Let me ask it a different way. When somebody comes into your space and it seems like a relationship may form, it may not even be a man or a woman, but a new friend in your life, do you ask God about those relationships? God, I don't know where this came from. Either it can be a blessing or it can be a burden. Lord, can you show me the intentions of this person's heart in my life? Because I'm in a space, God, where I'm serving you. I'm open. And I know the adversary has me in his crosshairs. God, everybody who comes into my life, I want to know what their intentions are. I know that just scared somebody in the room because I ask the Lord every day, don't let me miss my assignment, God. If it's me to listen to somebody, if it's me to share the gospel, if it's me to be a silent friend, help me to be a representation of the kingdom of God wherever I go. But Samson didn't pray them prayers because he had it all himself. So when we're asking ourselves those questions, how, how did I end up here? Why did I, how did I end up in this spot, in this predicament? Why am I making such poor choices at this stage and age of my life? How did I get here? Well, sometimes we think we have it all figured out, but God will allow us to find out that we don't know nothing. God will help us to understand, to, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your pathways I'm, I'm done last scripture the bible says then she let him fall asleep on her lap and she called some more men she called a man hold on man hold on, hold on. I'm pause the sermon okay look <laughs> First attack, a whole bunch of jokers jumped out the closet and Samson took care of them. These ain't the same jokers in the closet. Now, she got a barber in the closet. Sorry, Pastor. Then he fell asleep on her lap and she called a man to shave off seven braids in his head. And this way, she made him helpless and his strength left him. Then she cried, Samson, the Philistines are here. When he awoke from his sleep, he says, I'll just escape like I did before and shake myself free. But he did not know. Somebody says he didn't know that the Lord had left him. Second and final point, the way of compromise invites consequences. The way of compromise invites consequences. Uh, when you play with fire, you gonna get burned. Uh, it's only gonna be a matter of time. You might not get burned the very first day, uh, but if you consistently play with fire, you gonna be on fire, or somebody close to you gonna be on fire. The Bible shows the treacherous method that she took. I want you to hear this, and Grandmother Moore, we about to shout and worship on this part. When I was writing this, I said, Grandmother Moore gonna enjoy this. Watch this, y'all. The Bible says, after he told her all his heart, she made him fall asleep on her lap. The last time I fell asleep on a woman's lap, I was getting my hair braided, and I was about three and a half years old. My hair was in a space where people thought I was a girl in public, that I was in a safe place. We preach and pay attention, men, that you only fall asleep with your hairdresser when you can trust your hairdresser with your life. You only fall asleep when somebody cutting your hair when you're not afraid that they'll cut your throat. You never close your eyes with somebody with their hands in your hair, your crown, your gift, the access to your cerebral cortex, your spirit man is wide open when your head is at ease how and who does he think he is to let this lady put him to sleep and lay him on her lap not grandmother more you got to put your fingers in your ears uh uh the kids ain't in here um uh there's only a few things that can put a man to sleep 
and, and this text ain't say nothing about no sandwich. When a man has low self-esteem and he can't be where he's supposed to be, he will bring himself low just to get one thing. And when you don't know who you are in God, you will compromise yourself for that one thing. Don't understand what God has put into you, young man. Young man, you are carrying a seed. And everything that God put a seed in is special. So you got to be careful who you share your seeds with. Because that seed is so powerful, you don't even recognize what's transferring out of your body. When God's spirit comes out of you, you ain't got nothing to do but go to sleep. Somebody think I'm just talking out of the side of my head. The Bible says that God put Adam to sleep. And then out of his rib, he took the woman. And out of the woman became Eve. When God is bringing the things that produces life out of you, it will put you to sleep sleep night night go to bed somebody but men be careful with who you share your seed with I almost called this sermon sleeping with the enemy but I think that probably been done a few times already oh, we'll preach it next year amen Because he compromised everything that he was instructed to do, now consequences were coming. The worst thing in the world is to not be aware that God's presence is no longer on you. Now Samson was in a space of good company. Because there's three people that we hear about in the Bible where God left them. That the Bible wants us to understand that King Saul understood the blessing and the power of the anointing of God on his life. But as soon as he became disobedient and started doing things that God told him not to do, his spirit left him. And King David got promoted. Come on, God. And now Samson was in the same position. He was in a place of power, but his power only turn to potential when you get demoted you can see what God is going to do in your life but when you live a life from your own flesh you get demoted to potential that's going to preach in here that don't just be a person who lived a life with great potential you need to be admit submissive and obedient to God's word and let God power be invested in you and recognize this that Judas was always a man who was anointed by God to cast out demons but that same greedy spirit got a hold to him and for 30 pieces of silver he gave up his man his uno the, even though he was called to be the son of perdition he still couldn't handle the weight of realizing he failed God is there anybody in here who's ever had to look yourself in the face and recognize that you are out of place with God don't fool me now I said he realized that he had not had the spirit of God on him. Can you feel the fear in Samson's face? He saw his enemies about to take him out and the last time he saw these same foes, God's spirit was still with him. Now his hair was cut, but more than his hair was cut, his pride was cut. Uh, I, I've been so strong. I've been so successful. Now I'm in a season of my life where my enemy has overtaken me. A misguided lust for love. And now the Philistines have come and they plucked out my eyes. And the very thing that I got in trouble with, my eyes are now plucked out. Somebody can say, well, that's swift retribution. That's something that God says, the seeds that you sow will also be this. You will reap what you sow, that, that he had the opportunity to advance the kingdom of God and do what God called him to do. But when you're in your lane, you got to do what God called you to do in your lane. He, he says, I'm not here to, to, to destroy the enemy. I'm here to seduce the enemy and put myself, my family. Here's the last part for all y'all good Christians in here. I'm not only misrepresenting me and my family. I'm now misrepresenting God. 
the very thing that God called me to do, I'm here misrepresenting him. And now I'm in a space and a place where I'm in embarrassment to myself and I'm in embarrassment to God. I'm almost out of here that you could take this scripture, Pastor Compton, Judges 16 and 21, and say it this way. It's a, a blinding, a binding, and a grinding result of sin. I'll say it again. Blinding. His eyes were plucked out. Binding. His hands were bound with, with bronze fetters and grinding of sin. That they took him back to their homestead and they had him grinding out grain. And the worst part about this story is that he was a man who was able to do anything physically. But the amazing part about it, you couldn't see his gift. Somebody about to get happy in here. The Bible says that he was strong when he had the Spirit of God on him. But when he didn't have the Spirit of God on him, he didn't have supernatural strength. He was just a common man. But now this common man was a blind, bound common man grinding out grind against his enemies. And Grandmother Moore, it wasn't just that his enemies had him grinding grain. They turned him into a circus pony. Then now he was doing something to entertain his enemies. Help me in here, Holy Ghost. That some of us feel like we getting revenge back on people who hurt us. But all you doing is clowning for the devil. The devil wants to see you come out of your character. The devil wants you to mock everybody who's mocked you. But I'm reminded of a scripture that says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. That I don't have to respond when people treat me wrong. I don't have to respond when people say what I should be doing with my time. I don't have to respond when people put themselves in a poor predicament and want me to rescue them. I do not have to respond vengeance is mine saith the lord do it god's way and god will speak for you he was he was grinding y'all and, and and the saddest part about it strong man strong samson nobody wanted to come near him because they might kill he might kill him he was being led around the camp as the bible says by a young lad and the inference is, is that we mocking you even further than you grinding for us. Now we're going to show you what we think of you by allowing a child to babysit you. I put myself in such a regressive state that a child can hold me captive. That I have disobeyed God in such a manner that people ain't even paying attention to me no more. I ain't got no threat. Let me talk to the leaders in here. Never get to a space to where the church don't respect you no more. That don't come from you doing everything right, but be where you're supposed to be. Honor what you say and be accountable to what God has called you to be. Because if you being a leader focused on your feelings, ain't nobody going to respect you, not even the cheering. So, the Bible blessed us here today. We're studying repentance in Bible study. That Samson says, um, I don't have no eyes. My hands are bound. And people are laughing at me. I think it's time to talk to God. Uh, I, I'm not here to judge anybody uh, because the Lord had to bust my head to the white meat uh, before I finally repented and said, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. In his prison cell, he says, Yahweh, I want you to avenge me because I can feel my hair growing back. Somebody about to let me preach in here that I gave away my covenant because I compromised because of my company. That the people around may think my strength was attached to my hair, but my power went away because I walked away from God. That when I cut my hair, it was a symbol that I cut ties with God. Thank you, God. That when you cut ties with God, you are forfeiting your anointing. You are forfeiting what God has for you. 
So God showed him by his grace. Look at the grace in the context. Let me make it plain to somebody in here. Pastor Mo, if I woke up tomorrow and my hair started growing back in the right spots, I'd be happy to the Mo. It, it grow, Mike. Not just where I want it to grow. Grace. Allow his covenant to start back to being restored. He says, even though you fail me, even though you're in a spot where you can't see no direction, sometimes those are the best prayers where you can't see your way through, that you don't have a friend. Sometimes all you got is your kids. Sometimes all you got is your hands. When you don't put your hands together in prayer, sometimes God will force the issue that he couldn't do nothing but put his hands together because God had him in a space where all he could do is call on the name of the Lord and you know you serious about your prayers when you say Yahweh I need you to do a new thing in my life even though God says eh, we know all things work together for the good for them that love God and are called according to his purpose he says let me get my revenge God they plucked out my eyes even though he was repentant he wasn't all the way converted preaching here God sometimes we ask God for vengeance but God just want our submission God says I want your submission and I'll get your vengeance I just want your attention and I'll get your vengeance he says I ain't paying attention to that prayer but I give you your strength back because you're gonna be in a position to still be used by God somebody in the room thought because your hair got cut that you can't be used by God no more I want to introduce to you today the road gain in Christian community that your hair is starting to grow back because God is showing you there's still work for you. There's still use for you. There's still purpose for you. But I'm not going to give you back everything you had. I give your hair back, but them eyes, there's consequences for every decision. God is a graceful God. But God will be a graceful God after your whooping. I'm reminded of a man who got saved and he heard a sermon. He says, Jesus paid all your debts. The man got happy. He says, my soul is saved. He had one of them hangover shouts. Y'all know anything about that? Around Monday, about 9, 9, 50, you still like, oh, I feel good. So he called the bill collector. He says, hey, Mr. Bill Collector, yesterday was a brand new day in my life. He says, I gave my soul to Jesus. The bill collector got to speaking in tongues. They said, hallelujah, I'm so glad that Jesus made a way for you, but what you going to do about this 999? Oh, I'm coming to get that car. You three months behind. He says, what you talking about? That preacher said, oh, my debts are paid. So I'm calling y'all to say, put it on Jesus' name. She says, your soul belongs to Jesus. But if you don't run my money, we coming to get our house. Today, I'm telling you that God will forgive, but the decisions you make, you still have a penalty to pay. You still have a cost to pay. When you step away from God, there's still going to be some growing. When you choose to walk away from God because of whatever issue, but God says, I'm happy because you're repenting. I'm not repenting because I might get in trouble. I'm repenting because I know I broke your heart, God. Everything you called me to do, I did the opposite. Lord, I'm sorry. 
Everybody you told me to stay away from, I married them. Lord, I'm sorry. Even the way I look at you, Lord God, I didn't look at you for my help and my dependence. Lord God, I'm sorry. I'm turning my direction of how I see you and how I see myself. God says, I can work with that. So then God set up a situation to where Samson was going to be in a room full of a whole bunch of Philistines. And the Bible says that he got an idea. Somebody tap their neighbor, say that when God is in your life, he'll give you new ideas. <laughs> that when he walked past a pillar, he asked the young boy, he says, put my hands on the pillar. The young boy ain't asked no questions. He says, this one right here, that's the blessing of being around kids. Kid ain't ask him nothing. This pillar right here, sir? Yeah, that pillar right there. And put my other hand on this pillar. And he had one more prayer. He says, God, if you can use me one more time, I'm going to do what you call me to do right now in my final moment. In my final moment, I'm going to do what you told me to do with my whole life. Somebody going to catch it in a minute. I don't know how much time I got left, but since this is my moment, I'm going to honor God with my whole self. The Bible says that his strength returned to him and he killed more Philistines in death than he did in life. What's the moral of the story? How did we end up here? My sin brought me to this place, but my Savior allowed me to keep on working. My sin got my eyes plucked out, but now I walk by faith and not by sight. My sin got me in this position, but God's grace is available for all those who repent. Samson is not remembered for his faithfulness. He's remembered for his faulty ways. But in his last moment, he honored God and did what he was called to do. How do we end up here? Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for your word. God, I'm asking you, Lord, in Jesus' name.